When it comes to making speaker rings, speaker adapters, amp racks, and other custom car audio items, I find it advantageous to use plastics. Plastic doesn't degrade over time, it's much more dimensionally stable, it can't soak up water or humidity in the air, and oftentimes it can be drilled and tapped in order to add mechanical fasteners. But there are many different types of plastic, and if you watch my channel for a while, many times I will use a different plastic for the same application. In fact, Jacob noticed this and asked about it in a recent video. So in this video, I want to focus on what are some of the upsides and downsides for four different types of common plastic that we use in custom car audio. This will better help you determine which plastic to use for an upcoming build. So the first material we're going to look at right here is this plastic material, cellular PVC. So advantages for cellular PVC. I find that this material is very easy to find locally at home centers, a lot of places like Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, those sort of typical stores here in the United States. And that's because this material is actually starting to be used quite frequently for trim on houses. At my local home center, I'm able to find this in quarter inch, half inch, and even three quarters inch thicknesses, and I'm able to find it in very large four foot by eight foot sheets. Another advantage is in comparison to the other plastics I'll be talking about in this video, this is very cost effective. For a half inch, two foot by four foot sheet, you're looking at about 20 to $30. Another advantage of this material is it can be cut and machined with very common wood tools. You can use a wood cutting jigsaw blade, you can use a circular saw blade, that is made for cutting wood and you can get great results and this also works really nice on the router. Now let's talk disadvantages of cellular PVC. When you are cutting this it tends to leave a very fine light dust almost like a plastic equivalent of MDF dust. It's very light it has a tendency to coat things and kind of get everywhere whereas some of the other plastics I'm going to be talking about have more of a chip that would be associated with like milling aluminum or something like that. You don't really end up with as much dust dust as you do this material. Another disadvantage is if we look at a machined edge like this right here, it tends to be kind of porous. So if you're planning on applying paint or some sort of finish on these pieces, it's likely going to soak in and you're going to kind of see that porous look. Another disadvantage is this is not strong enough to be drilled and tapped. We need to add in threaded inserts, that sort of thing, if we want to use machine fasteners where we're going to take the screw in and out multiple times. Finally, this can be harder to find in multiple different colors they do make it in different colors but finding it in different colors locally is going to be a challenge it's pretty much only going to be white that you're able to find so sometimes when you're making a bracket or something in a vehicle you want it to be black to kind of blend in to the background of the vehicle you don't want it to be white and showing unless it's covered up then obviously it's not a big deal so in conclusion for this material applications include amplifier racks mounting plates speaker adapters if you're on a budget and I would say that you would want to stay away from this just because it's a little bit lighter of a material, not as dense. You wouldn't want to use it for subwoofer enclosures. Another plastic material that I recommend is this stuff right here, acrylic. It's important to understand that acrylic is sometimes referred to as plexiglass, but plexiglass is technically a brand name, much like Kleenex is a brand name for tissue, so the correct term is acrylic. Now acrylic is available in a ton of different colors and finishes which makes it perfect for finished parts. Parts that are going to be shown and that you're going to be able to view directly in a finished install. Now obviously one of the colors that you can get of acrylic is clear. The fact that you can get acrylic and clear makes it perfect for things where you're going to do LED lighting, where you want to highlight a sponsor logo by etching this with a laser. There's a lot of different options for using clear. Acrylic is also extremely dimensionally stable. When we machine it, it's going to stay the exact size that we cut it to and it machines very nicely and we can easily drill and tap this material to have fasteners mount directly into it. When we do machine this material and cut it, it's easy to polish up these cut sides and have have more of a finished look as well. Acrylic is quite common locally for most people. You're able to find it in thinner sizes at your local home center, and for thicker sizes, you can usually find that from a plastic supplier in your area. As you increase the thickness of this material, it becomes extremely strong. Finally, the adhesive that is designed for acrylic works extremely well. It's actually a solvent that kind of dissolves the acrylic, so when you attach two different pieces together, you're effectively getting a welded bond. 
What are the disadvantages of acrylic? Well, sometimes it can be hard to find the thicker pieces of acrylic locally. It can also get quite expensive the thicker the piece is. Thinner sheets of acrylic can also be somewhat brittle, so you have to kind of take into account what your actual application is that you're using the acrylic for. In my opinion, the best applications for acrylic are things like speaker adapters where you're using half inch or larger, subwoofer boxes where you're using half inch or larger depending on the power output of the subwoofer. And another application is where you're making very complex parts where you might be stacking multiple different layers that have different profiles. You can literally weld all of those layers together using that specialized acrylic cement. The next plastic material I wanna talk about is one that almost everyone should be able to easily find locally. But real quick before we do that, I do wanna thank show sponsor New Concepts. For most car audio projects, you're of course going to need some speaker wire. Now New Concepts carries a variety of different speaker wires, but this is one of my favorites right here, the Karma cable. This wire is twisted pair oxygen-free copper and comes in sizes from 16 gauge all the way up to as large as 8 gauge. This is the 8 gauge version. Look how big this is. Imagine using this for your next high power subwoofer installation. They also have this one. This is a 4 conductor 12 gauge version. So this is perfect for if we were doing some component speakers in an install and needed a set of wires for a tweeter and a set of wires for the woofer. To learn more about this wire and see what else New Concepts has to offer, check out the link down in the video description. The next plastic here that almost everyone should be able to find is this stuff, HDPE. HDPE is what cutting boards are commonly made out of. So there's many cases I've seen where people haven't had the best luck finding acrylic or cellular PVC, so they've literally went and bought a cutting board and used that for speaker adapters. Sometimes, I understand, you just gotta make do with what you can get. Another big advantage is HDPE cuts very well. It machines very nicely, the chips come off. It has kind of a smooth feeling to it, so it cuts really nice. It can also be drilled and tapped, but I do find that if it's a fastener that you have to take in and out multiple different times, it can kind of degrade the thread quality in the plastic over time. Disadvantages? Well, this is very difficult to use common adhesives on. If you're trying to use this for an application where you need to attach multiple pieces together, it's going to be difficult. They'll like likely separate. Even if you were trying to wrap this with like a vinyl material where you spray upholstery adhesive, even in that case it doesn't stick very well. Another disadvantage is larger sheets or larger thicknesses can be hard to come by and they can get quite expensive. You're going to get into that category where you're having to special order the material and if you're doing that, in my opinion, you're better off getting acrylic. So applications for HDPE, I would say speaker adapters is probably the main thing more so when you can't really find any of the other materials. The fourth plastic material, this stuff right here, ABS. In my experience, finding ABS can be a little more difficult at home centers. You're going to be getting this from a specialized source. It is usually found in black though, which is nice for custom car audio because if we're using it for brackets and things like that, it easily blends in to the interior. ABS is quite strong. We can drill and tap it to use mechanical fasteners. Another advantage is we can easily heat this up and bend it where we want to for brackets in our install. Now disadvantages, it is quite difficult to find thicker ABS. So if you're looking for an application like speaker adapters where you want a nice thick piece, Again, I think you're better off transitioning over to acrylic, especially since you're going to have to custom order this. There really isn't much flexibility for color either. You're kind of just stuck with using black. The final disadvantage kind of depends on your application, but one side of it always has this texture to it, whereas the back side is usually glossy. For some applications, the textured side is perfect, it looks nice, but for other applications, you might not want that. And if you're trying to use the glossy side, I find that this scratches really easily. And once it's scratched, there's really no great way to kind of remove those scratches. As far as applications go, again, I think this is great for brackets. You can easily bend sections of it to attach it in the vehicle. Great for securing amplifiers, that sort of thing. And if there's space requirements, using it for speaker adapters. But again, on speaker adapters, I think you're a little bit better off transitioning to acrylic. So in conclusion, the best plastic for car audio depends on the application for speaker adapters and where you're assembling multiple different layers together, or if you're making a subwoofer enclosure, I definitely prefer acrylic. 
For brackets and things that require bending in order to be mounted into the vehicle, I definitely like ABS. And finally, for much larger pieces and something that's a little bit more cost effective, I definitely like this cellular PVC. This is great for amplifier racks, or even if we wanted to make some of the trim panels and some of the inserts on our beauty panels out of plastic material, these work great because we can easily apply upholstery materials too if need be. I actually did a full video about this cellular PVC because I think it's really nice for a lot of applications. You can check that out up in the corner of the screen. A special thanks to New Concepts for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check out their wire down in the video description. And a special thanks to Bernard, John, Brian, Ali, Jeremy, Doug, Steve, Emmanuel, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. Big thanks to all those guys for helping make these videos possible. As always, my friends, thank you guys for watching.